Greetings, this is Glenn Lader from the National Weather Service in Tucson. Let's take a look at monsoon 2017 and how it might unfold. This video will take a look at some of the key factors that go into making a precipitation forecast for the monsoon, which extends from June 15th through September 30th. While there are many factors to consider when making such a forecast, we'll consider three of the most common ocean temperatures, current amount of snowpack, and climate models. Equatorial Pacific waters are currently in a neutral state, meaning temperatures are near long-term normals. However, a weak El Nino is a possibility for the monsoon. El Nino, or warmer than normal ocean temperatures, can mean a drier than normal monsoon for southeast Arizona. But the relationship is weak, even if those conditions develop. In addition, above normal sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific may also result in above normal tropical cyclone development, which can aid in our monsoon. Where the snowpack is still lingering in the Rockies can also help influence larger scale patterns that can bring moisture into our area. The longer term climate computer simulations are leaning towards a near normal monsoon. We'll take a look at each of these factors in more detail. Four of the weather patterns have been identified during the monsoon. Usually we see more than one of these types in each season, but one type can dominate. For more details, check out the monsoon tracker webpage located at weather.gov slash Tucson. So, how much rain is normal? Obviously, that depends on your location. Southern and eastern areas tend to get more rainfall than northern and western areas, and mountains tend to receive more rain than valleys, and in general, average rainfall ramps up as the summer progresses, peaking in July and August, and waning again in September. But this all varies from year to year. In this series of maps, heavier rain, average rain amounts are indicated in orange and red, with those areas normally receiving three to six inches of rain during the month indicated. In this series of maps, the amount of rain that fell last year is compared to average. Greens and blues indicate areas which received more rain than average for that particular month in 2016, while yellows and oranges show where it was drier than normal. From these maps, you can see June was generally wetter than normal, July and August were sort of hit and miss, and September ended up fairly wet. The end result was above normal rainfall east of Tucson and especially in parts of Cochise and Graham counties. The relationship between equatorial Pacific Ocean temperatures and our monsoon is not as strong as it is when we are talking about winter precipitation. As we start monsoon 2017, we are in a neutral state just below weak El Nino threshold conditions, which tends to favor a drier monsoon. But again, the relationship is not a strong one. What commonly occurs during an El Nino is greater tropical cyclone activity in the Pacific Ocean, which means a greater chance of that moisture reaching southeast Arizona, especially later in the season. Another factor that can influence the monsoon is mountain snowpack and drought. In order for monsoonal moisture to advance and persist as far north as Arizona, high pressure to our south needs to shift northward. While the high doesn't sit in the exact same location all summer long, it can favor one region over another for a number of weeks. The area of high pressure is really a dome of very warm air during the summer, and as such tends to favor areas that have been persistently dry through the winter and spring. The driest area is shown on the drought map on the left is southern Arizona, and the map on the right shows that Arizona and New Mexico have less snowpack than normal for this time of year than the Sierra, Central, and Eastern Rockies. If the area of high pressure favors the Arizona New Mexico area, or far northern Mexico, that could inhibit a longer term favorable flow of moisture into Arizona with longer breaks. A consensus of longer term computer models are indicating that there are no strong signals for Arizona receiving above or below normal precipitation. Thus, as shown by Gray in the graphic, the best chances are for near normal precipitation. The official outlook from the Climate Prediction Center for July through September shows warmer than normal temperatures across much of the nation. Equal chances of wet, dry, or near average rainfall is also indicated for area. That could mean that at least some of us in southeast Arizona receive decent rainfall this monsoon, though confidence is low. Let's review the three indicators that were just discussed and see if a somewhat less murky picture emerges. To summarize, the possible development of El Nino could lean us towards a drier monsoon. However, tropical cyclone activity later this summer in the eastern Pacific could transport moisture more easily into the desert southwest. Given above normal winter precipitation to our north, the high pressure lock could set up nearby or across northern Mexico and would make moisture availability more difficult with perhaps longer breaks in monsoonal moisture. Finally, climate models are favoring equal chance of above, below, or near normal precipitation throughout the monsoon. 
Obviously, there are a lot of moving parts here, and none of these factors we discussed lend a tremendous amount of confidence to the monsoon outlook in themselves. When taken together, we are seeing some clearly mixed signals. Whatever the case, rainfall will likely be highly variable from location to location, and in the desert, every drop counts. While it's important to use our water wisely, also remember to be prepared for flash flooding and the other dangers associated with thunderstorms during the monsoon. Thanks for listening to this presentation. For additional information about the monsoon, climate prediction, and monsoon safety, see the websites listed here. All of these are linked from the National Weather Service Tucson website, weather.gov slash Tucson. Monsoon Safety Awareness Week is June 11th through 16th this year, so stay tuned for more information and stay safe.